now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the Puckle Podcast. This is the 398th episode of the show. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my spectacular co-host. We have a cotton puff that flew in from Italy, the fluffiest whimsy cot. Hi, everyone. Then, of course, we've got the man with the know-how, R Sigma. Hello, everyone. As always, this is the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name I came up with in 2007. As always, we talk everything Pokemon from the video game to the trading card game to even, I don't know, Pokemon spinoff games. What, what's a good spinoff game that we haven't talked about in a while or ever? I really need to play Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. Like, I legitimately have the cartridge. You say that, but you're probably going to play Typing Adventure before you get around to it. I don't know that I could justify Typing Adventure because I don't own the cartridge. (laughs) I don't think it's expensive, and the DS was region free. Like, there's the European version that you can get. The problem is, like, I'm really tied up if I'm playing a game to talk about on the show. Like, we'll probably talk about a little bit more later. The Nuzlocke is what I'm really into right now. We have that black and white Nuzlocke. We just finished the eighth gym. It was really cool. I heard there was a Simapore on uh, Thursday. We're not going to talk about that. That's a, that's a different timeline. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a different timeline. That was a fun time, though. It's, it's always a good time. I appreciate everybody who comes out to it. You should come out because you get to nickname the Pokemon and get to hang out and talk with me. I, it's just such a different energy than Battle Street. Because battle streams, I have to be way more focused. And with the Nuzlocke, I'm not super focused. I mean, we're just going through the game. It's really bad because I haven't played Gen 5 in forever. So I don't remember all of the things that happen in the game. Like, I think I'm more well-versed in what happens in Gen 3 than I am with what happens in Gen 5. There was a moment, like you said, we ran into Bianca, and I completely forgot that Bianca had an encounter there. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, the rivals in Gen 5 just ambush you at the worst possible times. Right? You finish a route, and it's like, yeah, here here I am. Let's go. Yeah. (laughs) Compared to, like, X and Y were... It's like, oh no, I have to battle your Crawdaunt. Gosh, Tierno. You're, you're really threatening me here right now. <laughs> oh, Tierno. Can we, can we spend a moment trying to figure out why he has a Crawdaunt of all things? Because it can dragon dance. <laughs> I honestly don't think that's why. I, I feel like they had a lot of fleshed out character ideas when they were developing the characters for X and Y, but execution wise, it just did not get through. I I think they did really a really good thing with Shauna. Like you have that moment in Parfume Palace where like there's that moment of a slight romantic element. They did it on purpose because it's France. Yeah. I I think that's really cool because they did develop Shauna slightly different from every other character, right? Shauna's in the final lair for Xerneas slash Yavetl. Yeah, that was one of my favorite spots right there when you were assaulting their hidden lair underneath Geosinge Town. Yeah. Your rivals started to join you one by one. I was really hoping there would be a triple battle with that, and I was kind of disappointed they didn't do. That is sad, actually. Oh, man, I like It's just like when you got down to the bottom, it's like, battle these five people instead of a horde battle. It's like, what? (laughs) I think she's the only rival that actually helps you in a way that is not just Pokemon battles. I really wish they would have just given each rival or friend their own spotlight. Like, get a moment with each one of them. Or maybe just have only two of them instead of four. I agree with that as well. I mean, I really do appreciate the spotlight they put on Sharon and Bianca in Gen 5. But story-wise, I think in X and Y, they could have benefited from, oh, I'm going to go do this part of the story. And it's like, oh, Tierno is tagging along now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you've got a Tierno thing for that. Yeah, I I think that would have done better. Like, you can do it with Tierno and Trevor, and they each get their own moment. And I think that would be significantly better. I think it was still better than how. Uh, Yes. I mean, everything's better than how slash hop. (laughs) I mean, that's the truth. (laughs) Welcome to the show if you're new. Welcome to the show if you're old. This is the kind of stuff we get up to. Uh, (laughs) We got an excellent show for you today. We have a good topic today that Whimsicott came up with that's better than anything I could have come up with today. Of course, before that, we're going to just keep chit-chatting. And then we'll get into recent news and goings-on in the Pokemon community. And from there, we'll go into our Poke Quiz, our topic. We'll finish things up with our Pokemon in the episode and our mailbag segment. There we go. That's how, that's how the show works. 
But I guess I'll ask you guys, other than the XY rivals, how have you been doing lately? Swamped with work, so nothing exciting has been happening. I've gotten halfway through the new season of Queer Eye. That's the best thing that's happened to me all week. So wait, there's a new season? Did I miss it? Yeah, came out yesterday. Okay, so I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, I was too busy putting Patreon stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. How about you, Sigma? What have you been up? I don't remember when the last time you guys were on the show. I remember Wizzy Cat was on last week, maybe. That might have uh, happened. Uh, apart from the BuckleCon yes. episode, it was like the episode before BuckleCon, so. Oh, that's right. How's things since Fococon? It's not like we don't talk almost all the time anyway, so. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so hot around here, sorry. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, feels like 100 degrees with humidity. Oh, gosh. I feel like, I, I think like you and I, I think we, so I think out of everybody on like the show, I think Sigma and I live the closest to each other. Uh, apart from Baskin and Jushiro. Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, I mean, relative to me, I don't care about everybody else relative to each other. <laughs> I mean, Sh Shamu is kind of close too, but I think in terms of drive time, you and Shamu are probably very close to the same just because of the way Ohio is structured, their roads. <laughs> yeah, because you have to go to Columbus to get to me. Yeah, there's no like straight line path from me to you. It, we have to go through Columbus. To, we have to make a 90 degree turn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome to Ohio roads. Yes. That's yes. <laughs> It goes to Columbus. If you're going to Columbus, you can get there really easily from anywhere yeah. in the state. Yeah, if you're in Columbus, everything's like two hours away at most. And if you <laughs> if you don't true. live in Columbus, you have to go to Columbus and then go wherever you're going. <laughs> yeah. Like it, I actually looked into it. It was um for me to get from Dayton to Cincinnati. If I were to go to like downtown Cincinnati, it's like an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh, so I was looking into it though. I could almost drive to Columbus and then drive down to Cincinnati in like an hour and 45 minutes. Like I lose barely any time going through Columbus. It's absolutely stupid. <laughs> oh, good old Ohio road design. Well, I mean, they did it well if you live in Columbus. This is true. They centralized it very nicely. They did centralize the capital city very nicely. Like, Indianapolis is kind of the same way in Indiana. Uh, it's done very well. I Though I do think, well, to be fair, there aren't, like, a lot of places you're going in Indiana. You're, there's, like, four There's like four cities you're going to, and if you don't live in those four cities, uh, or not even those four cities, um, I would say I would say five, but one of them's Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not technically It's Indiana. honorary. <laughs> Honestly, uh, it bleeds into Indiana. As a native Hoosier, Chicago bleeds into Indiana. It kind of like overflows, and then there's this little magical place. Let's put magical in quotes called Gary. <laughs> you go to Gary, Indiana, but nobody goes to Gary. You go to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a good place to stop because we've been talking about that. Uh, as for me, like I said, we did the Nuzlocke. That's still happening. We got the we got the eighth badge. Now we're on Victory Road, about to start. I'll probably stream that today, <laughs> so it's too late for you guys now. Um, I do have to go to the post office first for some like Patreon stuff. They are popping up on the YouTube now. So they are popping up on the YouTube because they've been uploaded for the longest time. But like we wanted to make it done right. It's getting there. So please, please bear with us. Okay, we're going to cut it on over and go to the news. So let's cue that epic music. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower, this just in. And welcome to the news. Uh, this is the part of the show where we talk about all the cool stuff that happened this week in the Pokemon world. This week is going to be like really heavy Pokemon Masters, but there's also some other stuff to talk about. So first, uh, the first Funko Pop that I'm actually considering buying, uh, the Squirtle Funko Pop was announced and it's due for release in the US very soon. I might buy it just because it's Squirtle and Squirtle's my bro. Uh, <laughs> and it's the first one with the eyes that doesn't look like completely dead to me. <laughs> uh probably it's probably honestly because of like the squirtle squad glasses that make me go okay this isn't that bad uh i just i'm not a big fan of like the funko pop designs with just like the the dead eyes their monthly uh, releases for the pikachus have been kind of those cool are good though. those are good like, I think, it's amazing the quality when you don't have the creepy eyes yeah the creepy eyes just don't do it for me man um the the other thing is pokemon go did come out with like a really cool quality of life update uh, when you now go and you try to check your IVs of your Pokemon, they actually give you bars instead of just yeah. words. So that's really mm -hmm. nice. Um, I think they realized that everybody was just using third party apps for this anyway. 
Mm-hmm. And they're like, here, let me tell you. Let me let's just do it for you. Yeah, I deleted my third party app now. It, it, yeah, there's no point for it anymore. Nope. Uh, so it does. A, it does a really good job of that. I really appreciate that. Thank. Thank you. I never downloaded one pretty much just out of spite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Team Rocket's coming soon. Uh, Team Rocket is coming soon. That was announced, uh, semi-announced, I guess. Not not officially, officially, but it was announced. It randomly popped up at like nine o'clock at night on their Twitter feed. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> uh, I I don't understand the Pokemon PR. Honestly, I just don't understand it. I've been following it way too closely, like the past month, and like I've just learned I don't understand what they're doing, and I'm not sure that they do either. Enjoy the Lulu <laughs> post the day this comes out. Yeah, yeah. On Monday, <laughs> I, I bet you a million dollars there is a Wulu post on the Twitter about uh, about how Wulu is cheering for you because it is Monday. Uh, and because Wulu is the only good thing to come to come out of the mess that is Sword and Shield news so far. Oh, my gosh. It's well, it, the problem is they keep posting it every Monday. Because they, there's nothing else they can post without people jumping at their throats. People uh, they already, still jump on this. They still <laughs> jump on it. <laughs> but less so because it's Wulu. Like, Wulu is the only, like, generally approved part of the entire mess. Uh, maybe. Uh, also, Pokemon Go is doing, an, uh, doing a One Piece crossover, uh, which is really weird. Um it's uh there's a special Poke Stop, um, and it's also like it's it's celebrating Pokemon Go's third anniversary and like I think the twentieth anniversary of One 22nd. Piece. Twenty second anniversary it's of One Piece. It's the twentieth anniversary for the anime. It's That's the twenty it. second for the manga, so Yes. Uh in in recognition you can get a straw hat Pikachu. Maybe he'll join the straw hat pirates. But um tis. Um okay, moving on though, after after all the bad jokes. Um, we do have uh, the Pokemon regionals were announced recently uh, for two for the 2020 season, which is really fun. Um, I I don't know how I feel because we don't have the rules for the actual 2020 format. We just know that it's pretty much just going to be the same format moving forward for uh, for until Sword and Shield come out. Uh, well, no, we don't even know that they're like there's something uh, came out for that, though. Uh, we're, something dropped. we're playing on Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Uh, stay tuned for the format. <laughs> oh, okay. I I'd be okay with them switching the format. I'd be yeah, okay with we're that. switching the format. No, no one plays Ultra Series. <laughs> Battle spot singles. Let's go. <laughs> Honestly, like I saw the announcement for the regionals, and I opened the um, the link, the article, and I went way down the list, and it was all standard, standard, standard expand. And I realized they were not talking about the VGC at all. No, no. OK, so like the thing is, we had this year, at least this past year, like a TCG only regional. So, I mean, if you really want to get into like Sigma and I just going back and forth and kind of talking about VGC and how we don't understand who's running it and why it's being run the way it is, we can talk about that one day. Um, but this is probably not a good time to do it. Um, but they do. Yeah, they, they do really focus on the TCG very heavily, because honestly, if you look at the player numbers uh, at nationals, I think they have like 1500 TCG players. Uh, I don't think it was that many. I think it was like 1,100, 1,200 yeah. or something like Or no, it was probably what 1,500 after juniors and seniors are involved. Yeah, I think it's like 1,500 TCG players and you've got something on the order of like maybe if you include t- juniors and seniors in video game, you've got something like 250 uh, to uh, to like uh, 300. I think there was like 270 masters. And oh, then, were there? Okay. Yeah, okay. so I don't maybe about 500. So like a yeah. third of the player base. Yeah, so and like... And masters people, wise it's not even close <laughs> and let's just talk about the number of people that are like the amount of money who's spending more money is it the pokemon tcg players the pokemon vgc players yeah uh, exactly and i think yeah tcg is practically uh, subsidizing the vgc existing i can also talk about how i think the vgc format just isn't welcoming um in terms of doubles because it's a completely different thought than single battles like th- there is a different thought process there um i can vouch for that um, granted, I think I think it does help just knowing Pokemon in general. Like, I, I think that's probably why I did uh, OK when I went to Collinsville a couple of years ago, which is because I knew my Pokemon. I understood the meta. I understood the flowchart of my team. Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, but, but still, it's definitely it's like, definitely a di- different thought process. 
it's it's its own thing. Like you pick up the cards and you go to league and you're gonna do what you would do in a TCG tournament, maybe on a slightly smaller scale with mm-hmm. slightly less expensive cards. You pick up the game and you're not gonna play VGC in any part of it. I mean, you could play VGC like in in a in a league uh, format, but I don't think that's nearly as big because one, you don't have to play video game face to face. It's online. Exactly. You can do that very easily. Um, I think being able to play with your trading cards that you purchased, you have to go face to face to play. And I think that's I think that's the big disconnect there. Um, and I think mm-hmm. if people do it, I think they go, man, singles are the way that the entire game works. This is what I feel more comfortable playing. And yeah. and honestly, if Pokemon really wants to see some kind of growth in terms of like if they really want to push this to be an eSport, like Nintendo's really pushing Splatoon and Smash Brothers to be, I think what you need to do is you need to go ahead and somehow make your format singles, whether it be three V three or what have you. Um, I think you need to switch it to that because I think even battle spot singles to an extent could work. Um, not currently granted. No. Um, I <laughs> In think the world of Nagano Dells and mega Gengars, it's, yeah, it's a little I, scary. <laughs> not, not currently. I don't think it would work, but if you were like, let's say that you reduce the Pokedex and you take out some problems like Megas and Naganadel. I think you go ahead and you actually make a semi balanced meta out of Battle Spot singles. Because I think I think I think every time that I've played Battle Spot singles, it's literally like Naganadel's a problem, or Mega Gengar's a problem, or Mega Salamence is a problem. Mega Mawile's there, Mega Yeah. yeah. I, I think I think the Megas honestly ruin it. And if we're gonna get rid of Megas anyway, I think it's a great way to get the format going. Mm-hmm. Uh Blanderous is a problem still. Yeah, I, I would oh, be 1,000% oh, nice. fine. I would be 1,000%. Like, I would be back in VGC if they switched to Battle Spot singles. I, I would I would go compete in tournaments. Like, I was thinking about it this week, and I'm like, how do you even get doubles to work with Dynamax? Because it looks so bad with your trainer standing in front of the Dynamax Pokemon already. Imagine <laughs> seeing them sandwiched between a regular Pokemon and a Dynamax Pokemon. <laughs> and that's what the battle looks like. That's it's- true. It sounds so aesthetically unpleasing. To be fair, we haven't yeah. seen we haven't seen a double battle. No, doubles is not confirmed for this game. We yet. have not seen doubles in this battle. I like I I want to say I want to take it I I want to take it on like good faith that it's there, but man, I don't know if I can anymore. I can't say anything sacred. Um, no. <laughs> I can't. And so until I see a double battle, I don't know if double battles are even in this game. Mm-hmm. Same with uh, breeding. And it breeding weird. scares me. I we haven't seen Ditto. Granted, Ditto is probably not one of those like marketable Pokemon you throw in a trailer. But I Neither think Maractus uh, Maractus wasn't like front and center, though. It was like in the background. Yeah, that's how we'd see Ditto, too, though. Yeah. Just randomly on a field. I, like, I think oh, I think Ditto will be there just because it's a cool gimmicky Pokemon. Mm. Uh, I think it'll be there, um, especially if Mew's there. That means they have like the move transforms coded in. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So let, let's break down these uh, these VGC regionals, though. Uh, October 11th. So the first one's not until the end of September. I wish I think it's actually pretty typical. Um, it's usually the end of September, September 28th to 29th, Atlantic City Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. No, October 11th to 13th, the Knoxville Convention Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. That's a new one, actually. Um, in November 2nd to 3rd, the Greater Richmond Convention Center in the Richmond, Virginia. That's been a pretty big staple for them as of late. Um, they, you have November 8th to 10th, you have the Oregon Convention Center in Portland, Oregon. You've got the San Diego Convention Center, December 7th to 8th in San Diego. (laughs) Um, And then my favorite one is the one that always takes place in Dallas because it's always in the airport, which I think is fantastic. (laughs) January 17th and 19th, um, you have the Hyatt Regency Dallas Fort Worth, uh, Dallas Fort Worth uh, International Airport in Dallas, Texas. I love that, though. I love that it's in the airport. Um, It makes it so easy to travel to. That's just the way you visit U.S. cities, if you're like me. You just see the airports. Yeah, you see the airports. Um, the next one is, uh, oh, this one's actually just North American. This is March 13th to 15th, the International Center in, um, I'm going to mess this up, Miss- Mississauga, Ontario. Uh, so it's in Canada. That's interesting. I, have we had one in Canada recently? I don't think so. Uh, I feel like there's always a Toronto one. Toronto might exist. Yes, you're probably I think Toronto right. is usually the big this one. This is Ontario, though. That's interesting. I don't think there was ever one in Ontario. Um, then March 20th to 22nd, we have the Charlotte Convention Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Uh, followed up by this one, I think is very interesting. I don't think we've had this one in a while. I think th- th- there used to be ones here, but I don't think there are. There have been recently. April fourth to fifth, Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake, Utah. Um, and then you've got uh, the Albany Convention Center, May 9th to tenth in Albany, New York. I like that one better than New York City. I, I, was I think say, that's, that's really a, cool. That's a new one. I think I that's new. Remember. Albany, New York is new. I know. Yeah, that. I don't remember New York being a regional location for the um, past few years. So then there's two of them taking place on the same weekend, May 22nd to 24th. One is at the Santa Clara Convention Center in Santa Clara, California. And the other one's in the far more exciting Grand Wayne Convention Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, One of these places is better to be in. Your choice. I think the choice is obvious. Um, And then the the final one, as it is almost every year, June 5th to 7th, the Wisconsin Center uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, yeah, uh, that's uh, well, it's usually not in Mil- Is it in Milwaukee typically? No, it's usually in Madison. Yeah, huh. um, it, it's usually in use. Madison because I'm just like Ma- Madison is typically the. Yeah. OK, never mind. That's where we'll. <laughs> but yeah, the video game championships go play in them if you want to do that or TCG. They had all the formats listed. I just don't want to list them all because it's just going to get lost in voice. Just go look it up. It's on the Pokemon website. <laughs> yeah, know, know what format you're playing if you're going to TCG. Yep. Uh, Also, the Pokemon company this week announced not only things for Pokemon Go, but for Pokemon Masters, because Pokemon Masters is supposed to drop by the end of the summer, which is crazy to think about. Um, And uh, as cool as it looks, uh, we did get a a little bit of information this week in trailer. There was a new trailer that dropped that shows that you can have different versions of each trainer. Like there was a Brock with different clothes and also a Tyranitar instead of an Onyx. Oh, they've already started without even waiting yep. for events. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, there was also stars seen in that trailer that they just didn't talk about. So get ready oh, for that. No. So you might get the thing you want, but you might not get the best version of the thing you want. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Get ready for uh, get ready. It, this is exactly what uh, Fire Emblem Heroes is. This is pro- pretty Gasha much gonna, squared. This is going to be Fire Emblem Heroes. Uh, this is this is exactly what I feared. And I, I mean, Fire Emblem Heroes still does really well, and it's got a huge following. People stream it all the time. Um, they did announce uh, they did announce new mechanics uh, with unity moves. I don't actually know what's going on there. I, I think that's like a triple attack or something. Yeah, probably with the team. And uh, they also announced that there is a league with five badges, and one of them is the Tranquility Badge. And that's how you get into the Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon something league. I forget what it's called. Um, the Pokemon Masters League, whatever it is. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, so there's extra, there's new badges, which is kind of cool. Like, uh, as many of you know, I am a sucker for badges. Um, that's why Puckle made their own badges. It's, you can go to patreon.com and get those, by the way. Um, and, uh, but these are actually really cool. I, I mean, it's just a matter of time before, like, all the art's out for them, and then they're just made by some guy in China. And I can buy them for $15 on eBay. Um, other than that, though, there wasn't too much other news. Um, so that is where we're going to we're going to end it and we're going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their in- insane Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. That means they got to use what's in their heads. They can't use the internet. They can't use, I don't know, anything else. They can use each other, though. Whimsicott and Sigma will be operating together as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions worth one point apiece, except for that one time it's not. It's worth two. And they actually have a lifeline, which is a hint that they can use for one of the questions. But if they answer all the questions correctly without using that hint, they can cash in for an extra point for a possible total of seven. They are competing against their fellow co-host in a race to 30 points. Whoever gets there first gets $20 of T public credit. And actually, it's looking pretty close. Like it's you guys are you guys are like in the middle of the pack. But if you do well today, you can definitely jump to the top. Mm. Just just heads up. And so, yeah, you guys are you guys are looking pretty good. This is how the game is played. And, uh, yeah, this segment, as always, is brought to you by AnimeGravy.com, where you can get a bunch of cool anime-based art. These guys are great. I love these guys. They're actually going to be at MitsuriCon when I'm there. I forgot to mention that during the news. I'm going to be at MitsuriCon doing a panel called The Coronet Effect, The Magnetic Evolution of Pokemon. We're going to talk about some science and talk about some Pokemon. It's going to be a really good... I'm super excited for it, actually, because, like, it's, it's, like, 
I always thought about becoming a physics professor at a university. And this is a completely not pokey quiz, but uh, I thought about becoming a physics professor at a university and I've always had lectures ready to like interview with and stuff like that. If that ever becomes a problem and oh. I need to do that. And so like I have like I'm basing it off a physics lecture, but like adding Pokemon into it, it's going to be really cool. Oh, man, I wish I could be there. Uh, you may be able to be there audio wise because I'm going to try to record it at the same time and use it as like yes. a big episode awesome and it'll be released later on maybe probably that weekend so i don't have to record an episode <laughs> we'll see <laughs> i mean that is world's weekend <laughs> that is world's weekend we, uh oof well we wouldn't be get the news until the week after that anyway well we get the you know, like, friday we'll, we'll see because i don't so like i really don't want to record if i'm going to mitsuri con yeah no, no, that's understandable <laughs> uh all right so that is that is it guys uh let's get into these questions though question number one comes from bosophus you can submit these trivia questions on our trivia channel on our server these guys can't see it only i can question number one which generation is the first not to feature the kanto region Ooh. Oh. All right, so okay. not one, two, three, or four. It would probably be it's five. Then. Five, yes. <laughs> five is correct. You could not go to Kanto in generations one through five. I guess you couldn't do it in six either. Um, yeah, I guess it wasn't until Gen Seven again. But let's go. I mean, you couldn't go there, but Viridian Forest was still there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. It was so hilarious. Like the first time I went through Santalum Forest, I was like. I don't know why, but I know exactly where I need to go. I remember playing. I remember playing it because we were we were doing a doing the episode of the podcast that day. It came out, and I had only gotten like two hours into it before we recorded that. And like I was going through, San, I think I was past Santa Luna Forest at that point. But I, like I remember playing through that very specifically and just being like, "Yes, Santa Luna Forest." Uh, they totally just copied it. Uh, that was but that, so like Gen Six was fine because that was like the first time that they did Gen One pandering, and I thought yeah. that was really cool at the time. Especially considering, like, you know, but just removed it completely. Pikachu right? wasn't there. <laughs> right. It was such. It was such a fresh paint. Like, it was a. It was a really nice pace. It was really cool. It was awesome. And then they're just like, yeah, let's throw that out. <laughs> and they got rid of it. And I was just like, this is really sad. I mean, it hadn't gone over all that well. So. Yeah, it just. It just kept going. It just kept going, though. Um, that was the problem that the Gen One pandering just didn't stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, but moving on. Next question. That's one point for you guys. We're going to talk more about Gen 5. Uh, we've been doing a lot of Gen 5 stuff here on the podcast lately. At least I have because I keep playing Pokemon Black. Who is the only gym leader up until Black White 2 that did not appear in Pokemon Black and White 2? Because, you know, you had like the uh, World Championship. The only gym leader that doesn't appear in the World Championship. Is that what you're asking? Essentially. Essentially, yes. Okay. So, um... Yeah. It's not Giovanni. Does the elite? Does the elite? Does um? I'm sorry. Does um, the world tournament have elite four members? Uh, it might be Koga. Because it, it's it, exactly because Koga would have had his spot taken over by his daughter Janine, and if the world tournament doesn't have elite four members, only you know gym leaders and maybe champions, mm -hmm. then it would be Koga. Yeah, because even Giovanni made it. Blue is in there. So I think mm -hmm. it might just be Koga. Exactly. He's the only one that would make sense. The other thing I can think of... Juan is the other is one. Is Juan. Exactly. Yeah. But I feel like Wallace was in the Champions Cup, so I I think I like Koga more here. Okay. Uh, but I don't know for sure. I'll leave that up to you. I mean, it's... It's probably one of those two, and I feel like if you say Wallace is like counts as a champion, then for sure one is going to count. Yeah, as I feel like Wallace was in the Champion Cup, so okay, then it's probably Koga. Koga is correct. Um, yeah, because he was an Elite Four member. Uh, Wallace does make it in. I believe it's because he makes it in as a champion, though. He does make it in as yeah. a champion, so Juan exactly. makes it in his place. Champions were in. Yeah, Koga does not Koga does not make it. Yeah, for reasons. Uh, <laughs> you know, they should just copy and paste this. People would probably be happy that this is a post game. I'm not gonna lie. Mm, they would be. I feel like people would be perfectly happy with this. Um, all right, moving on though. Question number three is a Pokedex entry, and you guys have to tell me who that Pokemon is. 
Uh, so this one is, it's Pokemon Ultra Moon Entry Reads. It's desperate to intimidate its opponents. Be nice and pretend to be scared if you catch it glaring at you intensely. Who is that Pokemon? I don't know, but it's adorable. <laughs> it sounds like it should be a darker ghost type. Um, so it glares at you and you're supposed to be scared, but you're really, really not. It sounds uh, something like... I'd, hmm. I mean, it sounds like something like Panchamp, but I think oh. Panchamp's Pokedex entries would be different. Maybe. <laughs> Panchamp would be hilarious if that's what right. it is. Um. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably not something we'd intimidate, because no. otherwise it wouldn't be funny. It would be something cute. And exactly, but that wants to be, you know, BA. So Pancham is a really good fit, and Pancham is in the Ultra Moon Pokedex. It is, it is. So, um, do do you have any other solid ideas? Do we want to use the hint? I don't know. Um, no, I don't want to use the hint if it's not like the double point question. So exactly. I, okay, so let's give ourselves like 10 more seconds to come up with something else that would be... Because thinking of the ghost Pokemon in that game, I don't think there's anything that comes close to that. Like, no. it's Mimikyu, Gengar, Phantom. Mimikyu is the opposite. Like, yeah. it's scary, but it wants not to be. Yeah, so, hmm, Palosan's not it. No. I don't think. Because that's all about siphoning souls from the Pokemon caught in it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I feel I'm like... going to need an answer, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it, it grows up to be that dark, scary Pokemon. Exactly. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give you... Yeah, Pancham. We'll try that. Pancham is correct. Woo! <laughs> it is Pancham. <laughs> <laughs> like, I couldn't believe that you guys just picked so that up right like away. Him. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have picked that one. <laughs> oh, Pancham, because I would have been thinking a dark Pokemon. I have, I have a thing for, like characters who want to be super dark and scary but are actually like tiny pieces of buttery cake <laughs> <laughs> all right our next question is your is your bonus point question um i'm gonna say you need to get all three of these correct um there are three answers um in pokemon black and white there were um there were three lines of pokemon that were designed by somebody who wasn't of japanese origin what yes. were those three lines Okay, so this Mandibas, is James Turner. Vanillite and Golurk? Yeah, Golurk, Vanillite, and what was the first one you said? Mandibuzz. Bulby? Yeah. Yeah. Or, is it Mandibuzz James and Turner. Bulby? Um, he did the whole I mean, line. I mean, he did the whole line. Okay, yeah. he did the whole line? Okay. I and it was James Turner, Yeah, it's right? James Turner. These. This is correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, kudos points for getting being like, yeah, this is James Turner. Uh, because I feel I think the only artists that I know that work for Pokemon are James Turner and uh, Ken Sugimori. And like, <laughs> James Turner didn't do anything until like Sword and Shield. <laughs> well, but he's moved his way up. He's the art director for he Sword has, and Shield. He has. So. That's true. That is true. I, I think they did that on, intentionally, though, because it was the Gala region and he's from the UK. And he's British. Yes. I remember there's that like... Mega Man manga artist that did a few Pokemon in Gen 6 and then a bunch of mm-hmm. Alolan Pokemon and Vicavolt in Gen 7. So Yeah. Uh, okay. So that you guys are five for four right now. Let's see if we can make it a perfect streak because you got to use the hint. Uh, what fully evolved Pokemon has the lowest base defense of all fully evolved Pokemon? All okay. right. So Jinx comes to mind, but there's probably something slightly lower. Do uh do single stage Pokemon count as fully evolved? Sure, it doesn't matter. Uh, because like I remember, Deoxys attack had like ridiculously 20. low defense. I can tell. I will. I will tell you for free that that does not matter. Okay. All right. So it's lower than Deoxys de- attack. Yes. So it's not wow. Jinx. Wow. <laughs> Something that is as frail as tissue paper. Hmm. Hmm. I want to know if it's. Uh, I don't want to give too many hints for free. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. fair enough. Uh, hmm. I wouldn't say fra- I wouldn't say frail as tissue paper. I would not say that. <laughs> so it's got a it's got some HP or spe- oh, it's Blissey or Chan- oh gosh, you're right. <laughs> it has to be Blissey. It has probably like fifteen. Uh, I <laughs> think it's got. 15. I think it might be five or ten. <laughs> 
I, I think Chansey has five and Blue Sea has ten, or so. Chansey has ten and Blue Sea has fifteen, something like that. <laughs> You're absolutely right. It has to be like, Blissy. Oh, it's Blissy. <laughs> Blissy is correct. <laughs> um, it is a base stat of 10 for its defense. Um, however, it's got a base stat of uh, 255 for HP. So that makes that makes its life a little bit easier. Uh, Chansey is tied with Happiny for the lowest uh, for with five. Wow. Nothing is as bad as them. Nothing else. I love uh, that Chansey was already so bad that when they made the baby version, they couldn't go any lower. They couldn't, because it's already five. <laughs> they never go lower than five. No, Evil Hate then existed. And now yes. Technically, has... there is a stat lower than five. Is there? Uh, I mean, other Chansey than Shen Ninja's HP. HP. Yes. But that's weird. Yeah. Um, because there's actually, a, there's actually a thing in the game, if you try to get it to calculate the HP stat based on its actual base stat, it yeah, actually yeah, gives it, it HP. So yeah. it's, it's weird. It's, it's weird. It's it's like uh, it has its own little line of code to make it always yes. be one. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's why you uh, can't add EVs to it and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that gives you guys seven today. You got a perfect run. So that does change up the standings of our of our trivia score here. So I'm going to add seven to both of your scores right now. And we're going to see where that puts everybody. That does that does significantly change up the standings. People, more people are in the running than there were before. Nice. Uh, currently in first place, we have Linian with twenty two, followed up by Sigma with twenty. Whimsicott, you are in third with nineteen. Sublime's in fourth with eighteen. Seth Vilo is in fifth with fourteen. Doctor Shamu in sixth with ten. In uh, in seventh, we have Snag with nine. In eighth, we have Scrawn with eight. In ninth, we have Basket with four. And in tenth, we have Jushir with three. Uh, you guys are pretty spread out, though. It's really nice. A lot of people are just like a show or two away from like being competitive. <laughs> so, yeah, we're almost there. Almost there, guys. Probably another two shows for somebody, and they'll get it. <laughs> now we'll reset the ladder. But that is it for this episode of Puckle's Pokey Quiz. We are going to take a short break and be right back at you with the topic. And, guys, it's time for another iTunes review we got another one this week from, let's see, Le Petit Normand from the United States American iTunes. And he has given us five stars saying, it's great. It has been 12 years of greatness. That is all. That's what he says. If you want to have your review rev- uh, on the show, we just just write one. We check them every week and we want to see how you guys are doing. It really helps the show out too if you leave a review. It helps people find us on iTunes or whatever platform you're on. So we really, really appreciate it. So until then, uh, we'll catch you on the topic side. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be how Sword and Shield is going to change the landscape of competitive Pokemon as we know it. I I think this is something that a lot of people haven't thought about so far, um, just because I I mean, I have a lot of feelings here with this national dex cut. That's going to be huge just because one, we're still going to have a pre-bank and a post-bank meta. I, I think, depending on how many Pokemon are in it, because I mean, there's going to be egg moves and unavailable abilities and whatnot that that won't become available until we get the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, well, maybe not egg moves. Egg moves are probably a bad way to put it, because if all the Pokemon are there, well, no, I, I guess you'd still have egg moves if certain Pokemon are just started in the decks. Yeah. Uh, granted, I don't think there are going to be that many missing. Like Rabbit Spin, Tentacruel. Uh, Rapid Spin Tentacruel will make it in. I, I think. I think literally just because Rapid Spin exists on Tentacruel, we're gonna get. I don't know. We haven't seen Tentacruel or Tentacruel confirmed for this either. This is true, but like the. I think Caputo has the lesser chance of getting in than Tentacruel. I. I don't. I don't agree with you, but this is not what we're talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they have, I think they all have, I think all the fossils have a good chance of making it in. Just be like, hey, fossils, because you know that they're just going to add fossils into Gen 8 for no reason. Because um, it's been, it, I mean, it's been a couple gens since we've had fossils introduced. And so I could see them just doing it to drop in some new fossils. Um, all right, but let's uh, let's talk about this, because this is, this is kind of a big deal with just knocking down the pool of Pokemon. We're going to have a format on cart, but we also have Showdown brought to you by Smogon and all of those fine folks. And for the longest time, we've had this meta that's inclusive of all of the Pokemon. We have had pre-bank metas before present on Showdown that were broken, mind you. Rapid Spin Tentacruel was not in the Sun and Moon pre-bank meta. Um, <laughs> unlike they told you. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you're just calling them out on the one wrong thing they ever did besides continuing to allow land or Asterian in OU. So I was very frustrated by that because, like, in terms of hazard removal in pre-Bank Sun and Moon, I mean, granted, there wasn't a lot, but Tentacruel would, would have been by far the best one. And yeah. it ruined it ruined me laddering on Showdown on pre-Bank because of that. Because every time I see a Tentacruel in Team Preview, I'm like, they're using something that's illegal. Mm -hmm. in this format and that was just the most frustrating thing to me in the entire world but that is a stupid story we don't need to talk about it because now we're in like permanent pre-bank meta and i i'm so one i'm very interested to see how I, i'm i'm interested to see the numbers of players that will play the traditional ou because smogon has an or not smogon but showdown has announced that they are going to keep a meta with all of you know i guess 900 pokemon at, 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 roughly at this point being present in there, and I guess they'll hold on to Z moves and Megas at the same time. Maybe I don't know if we have that much information yet, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that part, but I do know that they said they were going to have all of the Pokemon in a meta together, and regardless of whether or not the Pokemon company has it. And I think that opens up like an interesting can of worms. One, I am interested to see how many people are using Showdown just for practice, and will just migrate to the new format of our permanent pre bank. And just move to the Sword and Shield format. And I'm curious to see how many people will just like retreat back to Landorus. <laughs> because mm. I, the one thing I will note is when the pre-bank meta did happen for Ultra... Or not Ultra Sun, but for Sun and Moon. I did note that there were not a lot of people on Showdown playing that meta. It was typically just people practicing for cart. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know how much cartridge actually influences people's choices in playing on Showdown. I really don't know. I don't understand the demographic, and I think it's just a really interesting to, uh, statistic that we'll get come November. Well, actually, like the situation is going to be different. Like we've never had something on Showdown that we couldn't have on Car. Yeah, that's really weird to me, and I don't like it. I mean, there are Hackmon things, but yeah, but that's like a very niche thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's much more niche than than something like this. This is going to be like large scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be like. You have a limited version of the game on the real game. Yeah. And you have everything on an unofficial online server. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how this goes. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that can happen here. Like, not only can we just see... I, I don't know. I, I'm still inter I'm super interested in that statistic. How many people are going to like want to play the Smogon format? Or we'll, we'll call it the Showdown format. And how many people are going to want to play the Cartridge format? I'm very interested. I can tell you personally that it's gonna be a choice to make for me because usually I don't like playing showdown I only use it to like assemble team and try out sets as a lot of people do because I enjoy playing on card so much more but now that like honestly maybe I really really want to play with whimsicott and I won't be able to do that in sword and shield probably mm -hmm. so what happens then like I have to play without the beauty of being on cart with all the graphics and the not having a back button and the timing and all of that in order to play with some Pokemon that I really want to play with at that moment. I don't know. I think probably at least me and you are in the minority because like I do really focus on cartridge and like the real experience. And I, because I think cartridge is a completely different skill. Well, not completely different, but the skill set's different on cartridge than it is mm -hmm. on Showdown. Because like you said, there's no back button. Mm -hmm. So you can't click something and be like, oh, I changed my mind. You have to be very confident when you tap that button, like this is what I want to do. And I think that's a very, it's a much more high intensity feeling. Also the timer on Showdown, I don't really like. No. Um, yeah. I, I think it is far too long. And on the games, they have that very consistent 100 second timer every turn. And I think that's also very, very helpful. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am torn, though, because I, I, I don't know. I want to see the Yusha statistics, because if there's enough people going to, like, the all the Pokemon all the time meta, like, I feel like that should be, that should warrant something to the actual Pokemon company. Yeah. Because, like, this means that people want this, and you're depriving them of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know that everyone wants it. Yeah, that's The true. problem is going to be how many people are going to want it badly enough to not play on cart anymore. And by the way, are we going to have to learn two different metas if we want to play in both? So the answer to that is, so first of all, I already dabble in like plenty of metas. So this isn't a problem for me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think these two in particular will have far more overlap than any other two metas that I've ever played at the same time. I don't know about that because a lot of things that are probably not going to be in the format 
are going to be super strong in the like legacy format where you have the tapus that probably aren't going to make it. Let's be honest. Exactly. <laughs> They're not. They won't. Uh, <laughs> like if you don't have the tapus and you don't have Lando, you can put in Sword and Shield a lot of stuff that would just get obliterated by them, but it is interesting to use in this eternal pre-bank meta. <laughs> Once you bring that over to the legacy meta, those things just get eaten. So mm-hmm. what we're what, so what we're saying is a crummy joke. Okay, so so. For me, this isn't a problem because you say, hey, there's no Tapus. And I go, oh, so this is Gen 6 again. And th- and then my worry is my worry, it's, it's Gen 6 with a nerf Talonflame. I was going to say it's Gen 5 with a nerf Talonflame, but <laughs> yeah. there's no Megas either. <laughs> no, it, w- it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be Gen 5. It wouldn't be that bad because we still do have fairy types. Oh, true. We have fairy types. It, it's going to be it's going to be almost essentially the Gen 6 meta with like a nerf Talonflame. And Jelteon being good again, it'll be fine. Um <laughs> But actually, yeah, metas and Z moves, they bring a whole nother level if you have the meta. Like, we don't know this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's so many factors. In in fact, you could have, like, four different metas. Like, Mm -hmm. one with the Sword and Shield meta. One with the Sword and Shield meta with just Dynamax and Gigantamax, but all of 900 Pokemon. And one with all of that and Z moves and Mega Evolution. I could see oh, yeah. them not caring about Z moves with Dynamaxing, because Dynamaxing is a lot closer mm-hmm. to Z moves than it is to Mega yeah. Evolution. So I'm perfectly fine with, with Dynamax. Like if they would have told us that Dynamax was or Gigantamaxing was taking over the place of Mega Evolution, I think I'd be more okay with like what they've done. Mm-hmm. I, I think honestly this whole thing's a PR nightmare. Um, I, I think I think they're just I think yes. they're just horrible at talking about what's going on, and they don't really. I, I, I've had this feeling for a while, and it's just like it, it's just the point where it kind of just like bubbled up, and it's actually affecting me. But like I, I felt for a while that Pokemon just doesn't really understand their fan base that well. Um, I think it's very evident by what's been happening recently in the community, and especially with the way they're just announcing things. Like yeah, they're just it's kind of been boiling up since maybe two years ago. Yeah, especially with Sun and Moon. I think with at least Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I think that was the moment that it was just like, it's like, okay, Sword and Shield better be good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, because Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, we can all admit, like, those were just like, I don't know, they weren't they weren't even upgrades, I would say, to to Sun and Moon. But I digress. Yeah, and then they're like, here's Let's Go. It's like, that that is not a step in the yeah. right direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I just, I feel like... I. I feel like it's a massive disconnect. I don't know. So the thing that I think is huge that I don't think a lot of people take into account. I know several people in competitive Pokemon who typically just don't buy the cartridge. They just play on Showdown because they're only in it for the competitive scene anyway. So why would I buy the cartridge? I'll just play with the new Pokemon on Showdown. And I, I think that's something that's that's a market. It's probably a relatively small market. Let's be honest. And if they can't play with all the legacy fo- Pokemon in their favorite format on the cartridge, why even buy it? I think that affects people more like us, where we try to have all of our tournaments in Puckle be on cartridge, because one, I think yeah. it just makes a much better experience. It takes a lot of work. It means you're dedicated to it, and you have a lot more fun. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I'm very, I'm very curious to see how things go uh, yeah, in the future. Yeah, especially since like it's not just about buying the card or not buying the card. You might have to buy the Switch as well. Yeah, I mean, on t- I mean, the Switch is also the highest price entry point for any console for a Pokemon game. Oh yeah, we did miss that mm-hmm. in the news about the new switch. Oh well. Oh yeah, uh, it's like a. It's let's not. I I don't even really want to talk about that <laughs> completely. Like, oh, remember when the switch light had better battery life? Well, uh, if you're getting a new regular switch, you're gonna have even better battery life battery life than that. So that. Yeah, but it's like a soft launch though, and it's like weird. <laughs> I can't I can't sell my switch and like get that because like if I sell my switch and just try to go like take that money and buy a new one with the extra battery life, I might as well just take. The hundred bucks I was going to spend extra and just throw it into a battery. Mm. Like I might as well just buy an external battery. You know I what I mean? I think there's thoughts it'll have a new chip as well, but uh, that's fine by me. Hackers can figure that out for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's that's where we kind of are with that. I don't know. I think the other thing that you were mentioning before we started the segment, Whimsicott, that I think is really interesting is will Pokemon go after Showdown? Yeah. Um, they've got they've gone after fa- ROMs like recently, like fan mm-hmm. games. Yeah, and but Showdown has never had something that they didn't have before that enough people cared about, but now it will. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing, and I mean, if, if it gets big enough, Pokemon might go after it. I I hope that's not the case. I'd be worried about it to an extent, though. I probably would yeah. be more concerned about Nintendo going after it than uh, Pokemon doing it. That's that's true, because uh, I think Pokemon employees actually do use it, and uh, do they? <laughs> I, I believe that's a, true. 
you brought up another interesting point, like of air, that it's not just that it's going to give us all the Pokemon, it's also that it's going to give us online for free and the Switch doesn't have that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's like a very fringe thing that could happen. I, I'm, I'm not ruling out the possibility that it happens. Like if it happens, I'll be unsurprised. Do I think it'll happen? Probably not. Just because it's existed for so long. And if they wanted to really do something, they could have done it already. I suppose. I mean, the, the situation is definitely different now, but it's also like you have to think if they remove it from there, it's just going to pop up somewhere else. Oh, yeah. And so like the thing with Showdown is I don't think people understand is that it's not just online. Like we can set up our own server for Showdown. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's it's not a it's it's I wouldn't say it's a trivial process, but I wouldn't say it's a difficult process. And yeah, so essentially you can you can enter a peer-to-peer -peer era of showdown yeah exactly i could totally see a peer to i mean that's already what we have to do with the switch right we have to do a peer-to-peer -peer type deal mm -hmm. and it, we don't have a server for it and so if we have to do peer-to-peer -peer showdown i can see that happening as well like maybe we no longer have the ladder that sucks but will we still have showdown where we can connect to each other with showdown oh yeah i don't think showdown would ever go away um if they were to get a cease and desist or anything i think we might see the server go down but i don't think we'd ever see showdown go down mm-hmm it's too big in what it does. People use it all the time. And if you really want to compete in a Pokemon tournament, people use that typically because it's just easier than the cartridge. Yeah, it's quicker. Like draft leagues use it because mm -hmm. it goes a lot faster and you don't have to raise your Pokemon or yes, uh, exactly. 2K hex them in or yeah. whatever you're doing with it. So I still don't think it looks as pretty. It doesn't. No. Uh, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> it doesn't look as pretty, but yeah. I, I don't know. I'm very... I'm curious. I hope they ripped the Gen 7, the no, that's Gen 7, the Gen 8 uh, models, and they put them in Showdown, and then I hope they take the missing Pokemon, and then just do the same lighting effect on the old Gen 6, 7 models, and then put them in as well. I'll be curious to see if, once Sword and Shield come out and they data mine it, if, like, old abilities that aren't actually on Pokemon in oh, Sword and Oh, they're in there. It's are in updated. There. Like, not just in Ooh. there, but they changed them, too. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be interesting. I don't know. I, there aren't a lot of abilities that I think aren't widespread enough for that. And I think almost anything with a unique ability will probably be in there. Mm -hmm. I think like, I think the I think the only one that I think we'd have a risk of not seeing in there is Wonder Guard. Uh maybe I, Wonder Guard. Uh, maybe Beast Boost. Out? Beast Boost uh, Beast Boost might not be in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like I think they're, they're like remember when we were at a point in the new cycle for Sun and Moon, where they were revealing all of these amazing new abilities, and then they just fell into oblivion because no good Pokemon had them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I think so the all of those will probably be lost to the sands of time, and no one will care. The problem with Sun and Moon was a lot of Pokemon were on island time. That was just the problem with Sun and Moon. <laughs> they lacked like, the speed stat. <laughs> Are you Tapu Koko? Are you Rabombi? Well, yeah. then, I'm sorry you have less than 100 speed. Are um, you an Ultra Beast? Are you a uh, Tapu? Are you Rabombi? Oh, well, then you're probably not good in this game. Or are you Toxapex? Um, <laughs> I mean, the Tapus, you say, as if there is more than one Tapu with more than 100 speed. Uh, that's true. But Lele's also close. Lele's close, but like they're all good. I would say they're all good. Oh, yeah. They don't need the speed. Like Bulu's fine with its low speed. They definitely they definitely messed up. I think I I understand their balance argument if they actually fix it because they did kind of like bring in some big nukes in Gen 7. Mm. I, I think they really did that to themselves and they kind of backed themselves into a corner when it came to that. Mm -hmm. uh, which is sad. Yeah. It was a lot of power creep, but unfortunately Z crystals were benefiting the strong Pokemon that were strong already and not so much the weak Pokemon. And okay, but that's I think that's the problem with every single one of their gimmicks. Well, I think Mega Evolution did a better job. Mega Evolution job. helped a lot too until they were like, Yeah, let's give it to Salamence. That's fine. Yeah. And Meta <laughs> Salamence and Metagross. Metagross they need needed it. it, but they didn't need it that badly. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it didn't need what they gave it. They didn't need 40 points in speed, let me tell you that much. Gosh, Mega Metagross Just give it a, so terrible. Just give it like a 103 speed to outspeed Garchomp. Well, the, pro the, <laughs> the problem is they gave, it, they gave it 40 base speed points, and then they, I mean, they only gave it the 100 extra base, te base stat points that they typically give Megas. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, they gave it Tough Claws. <laughs> Yeah. Just like Charizard. Wait, yeah, and it was just like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? I mean... It was just okay in Gen 6 anyway, because it still had... Because of the speed. One. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was the biggest thing that they changed with Megas, honestly. I think that was... I mean, if you want to talk about Megas getting OP, I think that was the biggest thing that changed it. Mm -hmm. mm. 
was the was speed turn one. It did so much for Mega Deontay, Mega Beedrill, and Mega. It, it hurts Sableye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, poor. It hurts Sableye. Sableye. <laughs> it hurts Sableye. But yeah, I don't know. I would I would be interested. I'm very interested in like the usage stats and everything when this mm-hmm. comes out. I I really want to see how it's handled because like the Pokemon community is something that's gonna is definitely gonna feel this change. And I don't know. It could be bad because like maybe you split things too much on showdown between people who play traditional OU and people who are going to play the cartridge version of OU. I don't know. Honestly, it might. And then on top of that, what are you going to tier? Do you tier only the Pokemon that are in Sword and Shield? Like I, In that situation, I don't even think we get to like PU even existing, which is interesting as it is. I'm okay with that, though. Like, I'm kind of okay. I remember when they introduced RU, and I was just <laughs> like, what is this? Because it used to be, it used to only have like a couple tiers. You had OU, UU, and NU. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they introduced RU, and I'm like, what is this? And they're like, well, we have a lot of Pokemon. And I'm like, okay, reasonable. And then they introduced PU, and I'm like, what is this? And they're just like, the things that aren't good anywhere. And then it's like, here's ZU. <laughs> it's like, well, you guys yeah, and then stop. ZU, and I'm like, I'm like, you guys are done. Okay, we're cutting you off. <laughs> it's okay. We all understand Silvalli added a lot of Pokemon to the Pokedex that aren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then the Pokemon Company was like, "Oh, also, we're gonna give you trouble with Ubers. Here's Mega Ray Ray." Uh, they don't care about balance, or they wouldn't have the exact same meta again. I think they were really hoping when they announced the meta for this year that Alternate Crosma was gonna be like the new hotness. It's just and okay. then. <laughs> I, I think they thought it was going to be the new hotness. And then I think what really, I don't know, if they want to use the balance argument, they can absolutely use the 2019 season in my mind because yeah. it's literally just boiled down to the exact same thing that happened the last it's time. It's 2016 over again. It yeah. literally is. It's just 2016 all over again. It's just, yeah, we have alternate crossma, but ugh, nobody yeah. wants to use it. Weather. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the, I think that was probably the biggest thing that hit that. Yeah. Cause they let, or ass just go crazy with power creep. Oh yeah, they really did. I think I think that was the problem. How do we make Mega B drill good? Well, it doesn't need special attack, so that regular hundred boost, let's boost it up a little more by just mm-hmm. removing all of its special attack. Yep, it was it was an interesting time, very interesting time. But yeah, uh, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, hopefully, Smogon doesn't die on us. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. I doubt they will. I really doubt. Um, I'm very interested to see. I'm also very interested to see what the game after Sword and Shield is, and see how that changes things up. Because I I am very worried, and I think the uh, I think the biggest thing that I'm worried about is inner inner generation incompatibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my. I mean, I want to say this on the show because uh, I I want to credit this this uh, this argument to PD Winwall Winall um on YouTube because like he he had this very very uh, good argument. I mean, why why this is a bad idea, and I feel exactly the same way. Is that if you have, let's say that you can't buy like a bajillion video games a year, right? Let's say you can buy, you know, one, two video games a year and you decide to buy Sword and Shield. Your friends buy Sword and Shield. You're having a really good time. Then next year we get the Gen 4 remakes in 2020 and those have a completely different pool of Pokemon. And you go into that, you go into that game and you can't afford that game this year. You decided you wanted to play something good like Fire Emblem Three Houses and you can't afford to buy the newest Pokemon game, well, now you're just kicked out for a year from Pokemon. And that's something that hasn't happened before. You're usually good with one game for three years. And I think that's something that we're losing, and I think that's something that's really bad, and it affects not... Probably not me at this point. Like, I'd say that doesn't affect me, but I think it affects the magic that was Pokemon mm-hmm. for for kids. Yeah, like... Imagine a kid at Christmas saying, I want Pokemon for Christmas, and you get the wrong one. Oh, God. And you can't play with your friends. Oh, God. I didn't even think about that part. That, you're you making, didn't? You're making me hurt. Yeah, uh, right? You're making me hurt. Oh, Because, like, I can imagine... That would be bad. Like, yeah. that I just... I worry for uh, all of that in the near future. I, I don't know how it's going to work out, and I hope it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope they they manage that in a decent way. I'm really hoping, and I mean, I know you would disagree with me on this one, Zakat. I'm really hoping that like their new policy is like the first game won't have all the Pokemon, but maybe like our director's cut will because we want to actually sell director cuts copies this time. I mean, it's not that I disagree with you. I would love that. I just don't think it's gonna happen. That's what you meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, and I, I don't know. I think that's I think that's a possibility at this juncture. I don't know what that means, though, for the for the future of the Pokemon franchise. And I hope I mean, I feel like they probably take this all to heart because they can't they can't come out and say it at this point. Right. 
mm-hmm. like, hey, we're going to put them in the director's cut. Uh, because if you do that, you sabotage mm-hmm. your own game. You're not selling it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you just sabotage your own game. Unless you say, oh, and you can get the director's cut for like a reduced price if you already own the game or something. Yeah. That's exactly. the way they'd have People to do People are it. still going to skip Sword and Shield if you say that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's just it's just not going to happen. I mean, we, we have to wait for Sword and Shield to be out, and then we have to wait until like March or June. Uh, yeah. like that's, The way that's it's really... going, it's probably going to be announced like end of May again. Or whatever's next year. Exactly. Well, just wait. We're going to have to wait 11 months until mm-hmm. we'll find out. Maybe 10, 10 months before we figure out what's going on with everything. Um, maybe they'll announce something with home as well. Maybe. Uh, we, can, we can only hope. We can only hope. We should have an entire episode on speculating on what home is. Um, that'd, be a, that'd be a stupid episode. Um, all right. But this is a good place to stop it. We are going to take a short break here, guys. And we're going to be right back at you with the Pokemon of the episode. We will catch you on the flip-flop. Well, school's coming up, kids. If you want some cool new swag for, I don't know, back-to-school season, you can go over to the Puckle Tee Public Store and you can go and grab any kind of designs, whether it just be the Puckle logo so you can represent uh, me and the company that all these people are working for, or maybe you just want something cool like a Pokemon like Dragonite Kanji shirt. It's fantastic. We got everything over there. If not, maybe you want to throw a pillow to throw in your apartment if you're going to college. Just some cool artwork to put on your wall you can just go grab some of the puckle staff uh pictures that basket put up they're great uh, i suggest it everything you can buy there helps us out in any single way that you can possibly do it uh it, it's a great way to support the show and get something in return so please go do it and i will catch you guys on the flip-flop <laughs> episode and welcome to the pokemon of the episode our pokemon of the episode this week is national decks number 488 chrysalia the lunar pokemon it's diamond and pearl pokedex entry states shiny particles are released from its wings like a veil it is said to represent the crescent moon it was a roaming pokemon roaming pokemon are the best and worst thing in the entire world i hated them Mm. i dislike them i'm not a fan uh, Cresselia is a good Pokemon, and I don't know why it's in the RU tier. So let's uh, break it down. Base 120 HP, base 70 attack, base 120 defense, base 75 special attack, base 130 special defense, and base 85 speed. All of those are not bad, minus maybe the attack stat. Like It was like one of five different levitating psychic Pokemon from Gen 4. <laughs> that's true. That's that's true. It did get out that's why the it's wash. down there. It's like, oh, but you could be running as Elf. Uh, okay, let's do not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, they, let's not get ahead mm-hmm. of ourselves. Cresselia is super bulky. Uxie. Uxie is the same thing, though. Yeah. I did not realize it got all the way down to RU. I always thought it was like UU. But it is in the RU tier on Smogon. It is, uh, it's okay. It's, it, it's doing all right. I, I mean, it's a bulky boy. You just gotta have bug and dark types. Take it down. So we, yeah. we built you a team today so you can use Cresselia to your, to your best ability and also get a shiny one if you're a patron. Um, <laughs> if you want this team, obviously, I, I want to make this clear because people have asked me about it several times. You can actually find all of these teams in our Discord. We started a new channel on it where we just dump the Poke Paste for each of these teams so you can just drag and drop it into Showdown yourself and you can go and play with it. Um, I we, we make sure Thatch can win one game with these teams. I don't know if that's a good benchmark, um, <laughs> but maybe it is. I don't know. So I've won at least one game with this team. Uh, it's, it, it's okay. Um, I, I'm okay with the fan. I'm a fan of it. Uh, Cresselia did nothing in the couple of matches that I played with it, <laughs> but Cresselia is the star of this team. It's at least what we built around. And Cresselia has 252 HP, 112 defense, 144 speed with a bold nature. Uh, it's running Moonlight, Psyshock, Moonblast, and Toxic. This is a standard Cresselia set. That 144 speed is so it can outspeed Honchkrow and Pangoro. And it does one-shot them with a Moonblast because Honchkrow has, like, no defensive stats, it turns out. I always imagine Honchkrow being bulkier than it is, and then I learned it literally has, like, nothing. It's just because it looks fat. Yeah, it looks fat. But everything in Gen 4 looked fat. And, exactly. And that's the sad thing. Um, <laughs> so things really that retain growth. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So the things that uh, to help out with Cresselia to really start building a team that can that can cover its weaknesses like dark types and bug types. Um, we we went through and we looked at good team members and Shaman actually comes up as one of the preferred team members because it can help ward off uh, Mons that would scare away Mons that would protect Cresselia. <laughs> 
And so Choice Scarf Skate Shaman is what we went with today. No uh, Z Celebrate, unfortunately. Natural Cure is the ability. 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed, Seed Flare, Healing Wish, Psychic, Hidden Power Ice. Standard Shaman. Gotta kill those Flygon. Uh, you gotta kill the next. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta be able to KO Flygon. You can KO other bulky, scary things. And Shaman does a really good job of all of that. Uh, who who wants to do this next guy? I'll do that. Do the Bubbly Boy Sigma. All right. So we got a Raquinid here with a Splash Plate. Water Bubble is an amazing ability for it. Makes it so you can't be burned, really doubles good. the attack of your water attacks. I think it has the power of fire attacks used on you, too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's just the... It's, it's a great ability. Uh, we're going max attack, max speed, adamant nature. It sets our sticky webs for us, which helps our other teammates outspeed just about anything that gets hit by those. Uh, liquidation, solid stab, exactly what you want to be doing. We have magic coat because reflecting other entry hazards, hazards is nice. Yeah. And leech life because we realized answers to Cresselia were kind of light on our team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yes. next Pokemon is Arcanine with a life orb. Ability we're running is Splash Fire, so we can switch into those fire types. We actually get two Pokemon that can do that, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Max Attack, Max Speed, Jolly Nature, running Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Extreme Speed, and Morning Sun for a little bit of recovery. I just think Arcanine yep. is a blast, though. Like it's just it's honestly one of the better ones. It's such I, a good I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's an RU. It's such a good mod. I am happy that it's coming back for Sword and Shield. So. I am too. I think I think honestly it might see more play in Sword and Shield when we lose certain Pokemon. And that gets me excited. Yeah, like you're never picking Arcanine when you have Heatran available, but you know, Exactly. Heatran better not be in. Yeah. Uh if Heatran makes it in, this balance argument's just gone. Like it's one thousand percent gone. <laughs> like it was shaky when we saw Talk Specs, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's Heatran just gone. is a final straw here. Yeah, Heatran, Heatran tells me that this isn't good. Unless they're just like, Heatran will come in a couple months later as a raid boss. I'd be like, cool. But it's the only other Pokemon we're adding, so bye. <laughs> 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 That'd be such a cool way to get new, like, mythicals, by the way, is Dynamax raids. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Um, okay, but moving on. Whimsicott, take us home. Yep. Well, this is RU, and you gotta have a Mandibuzz. Standard leftovers overcoat, 248 HP, 20 defense, 24 uh, 240 special defense, careful nature, it's got defog, taunt, roost, and foul play. Pretty standard Mandibuzz. Yeah. The fun member of the team is Tyrantrum. Honestly, this should be the Pokemon of the episode, I'm not gonna lie. I have more <laughs> fun with this Pokemon on this team than any of the others. Shiny one looks really cool too, so. Yeah. Oh yeah, blue. Okay, so Tyrantrum has the ability Rock had. it has max attack, max speed, 4 HP, Jolly Nature, of course, and it's running Rock Polish in case your Araquanid was not enough with its sticky web, Outrage, Earthquake, and Head Smash with the Rock Yum Z. It's going to destroy stuff. It's so nice. So Dragonium Z is also an option if you don't want to click Outrage, um, and it is completely understandable. I personally, this is my playstyle, not your playstyle, um, I chose Rock Yum Z because I do not like the idea of a Head Smash missing. Um, typically, you're sending yep. in Tyrantrum in situations here where you absolutely need a Rock-type move to hit. And if you're going to give yourself a 20% chance of failure on that, you, it just feels bad. Yeah, it is bad, and you're going to feel bad. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can get like a Cloyster to switch in on it or something, and you feel really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's that. Also, it's still it's still a Tyrantrum. Tyrantrum's amazing. That speeds you in Mega. That's great. After a plus two. Mm-hmm. After after plus two and it's at plus one. The young mega's at plus one. Yeah, it's like, oh you're protecting or oh you're doing something that's not going to kill me. <laughs> yep. Haha, -ha, got a rock span. Uh, and he takes like he takes bug buzz pretty well too. It was it was still it was it wasn't an Oko. It would have been a two hit KO though. Yeah. If it's not specs, I don't think it'll kill. Specs yeah. might. It'll be close. It'll be close. Um I it might be a roll at specs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is the team. I had a lot of fun with this team. I mean, uh, I, like I said, Cresselia didn't really do anything. I think Tyrantrum really shined. Arcanine did really well in this team as well. Um, we met, we built an Araquan team like a few months ago. And it, this kind of reminds me of that because, I mean, Araquan is just a solid member all around. I love Araquanid. And in fact, since we like we played around with a couple of rock scepters and we ended up not putting one on the team... You actually kind of have one in a very roundabout way with if Magicoat, you play your yeah. cards right with Magic Coat. Mm -hmm. So it, that that is like a I would say the Magic Coat is probably like a higher order play type deal. 
And so if you're new to Pokemon, you might not be able to pull that off as well. Um, I would say I, to those people, I would say, just keep playing Pokemon uh, because you'll inevitably be like, OK, I know what this guy's going to do. And that guy will probably do it. Yep. Uh, that's just how Pokemon works. You have to you have to learn what's the typical play and how people would play it. Um, I always find if you're having trouble with a certain Pokemon, this is completely not Pokemon of the episode material, by the way. This is just competitive battle advice with Thatch TM. And so uh, if you have trouble playing against a certain Pokemon, and you realize, man, this Pokemon's giving me a lot of trouble. I find it best to like go find a sample team or go build a team around that certain Pokemon, that certain set you're having trouble with and play it yourself because you will better understand that Pokemon a bajillion percent after you play it and you will be able to beat that Pokemon because you go, I know what the thought process is behind that. So that's my, that's my advice. I mean, obviously my advice is to go play with as many Pokemon as you can, which you could probably go do by just grabbing Poke the episode Pokemon uh, teams and playing with as many Pokemon as you can understand how they work. So uh, I, it's just a suggestion. If you want to get better at Pokemon, you don't by no means don't have to do that. Uh, you can just go and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash buckle podcast and give us $5 and get a shiny, uh, a shiny Chrysalia. And that's where you end the game. <laughs> yup. And I guess, I guess I should mention why we're doing Chrysalia. This weekend is the 50th anniversary yes, of true. the moon landing and we wanted to do something nice about it. That's true. Uh, we should have explained that. Um, but yeah, that is going to be it for the Pokemon of the episode. We are going to take a quick, it's not even a break. We're just going to kick it on over to the mailbag. Mailbag. Send in your emails. And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is brought to you as always by the energy drink Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. 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 And as always, we'll give the Green Tauros badge to anybody that we remember. Um, you can turn your Discord name green. It's cool. Uh, and as so if you uh if you're new to the show um this is the segment where we read listener emails you can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com and we'll probably read it as long as it's a interesting email um and has more to say than like my favorite pokemon is squirrel um though honestly i'll probably read that if you say your favorite pokemon squirrel because of bias (laughs) but you can email us at pucklepodcast gmail.com we typically have a writing prompt uh this week we asked if you guys uh what your thoughts were on gigantamax Uh, we only got a few people that wrote in um and then this week uh, what do you think about competitive? What, or would you play legacy Pokemon on Showdown, or would you play, uh, or would you play only the cartridge games? I'm kind of curious. Maybe we could take a small survey inside of our own community for that. Email us at uh, pucklepodcast@gmail.com. Without further ado, though, let's jump into these emails. Our first one is from, I guess it's YJV one two one on the I Discord. Guess it is. Yep. Okay. All right. Hello, cast of Puckle. How are you all doing today? Good, thank you. I'm doing okay. Mm. Yeah, fine. First of all, the new Pokemon revealed. I love them all, except Duraludon. I think it is really ugly. Its design is so plain. It looks like a bunch of random shapes put together. Kind of. It looks very (laughs) devoid of detail, except for the fact that its arms have different shapes. And those legs, ugh. Eh, Enough complaining. Maybe I will like it if it's competitively good. Maybe. For the subject <laughs> maybe. Um for the subject of Gigantamaxing, I honestly like it. Though I agree that it just comes back to Megas plus Z moves. However, I really have faith in Game Freak to justify its existence. Though the more interviews they release, the more I lose faith. Welcome to the club. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if the leaks are to be believed, some non-fully evolved Pokémon will receive a Gigantamax form, and I think it's great. I would like that. Actually, I would. I think that I think that's the only place where Gigantamax might be able to score points with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also makes me wonder why anyone would use Dynamax, but again, I have faith in Game Freak. Well, apparently because not all Pokémon can Gigantamax. Well, I so the the way I can see people using Dy- Dynamax is kind of like how the Gen Seven meta has shifted from the Gen Six meta, because in Gen Six we really focused on using mega Pokemon on our teams. Like every team had a mega on it. It was like a necessity. And in gen yeah. six, we, I, it's a combination of power creep and Z moves in gen six. We moved away from the necessity of having a mega on each team. And, yeah. and I think that's kind of why I could see us using uh dynamax and not gigantamax. So let's say you don't have a Pokemon that can gigantamax on the team that you built. 
you can still dynamic dynamax of pokemon and you can still get some kind of like z move type deal out of it yeah yeah i had i had a lot of fun playing in gen 7 and like three quarters of the time i forgot to put a z move on my team like, yeah there's a chance that you'll have to defensively use dynamaxing as well as well yeah that's true i don't know it depends if dynamax yeah. requires an item they haven't made yeah, that clarification that, that's what yet. it comes down to mm. Good point. And they purposely like didn't let you like look at the menus and stuff in uh yeah. in the demo. I think you cause you saw like the Everstones on the Pokemon or something like no, that. No, you couldn't no, there were no Everstones on the Pokemon in uh in the demo. Okay. They just weren't holding any items, but I don't know if that's final or not. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lastly, I just want to say that if Sword and Shield turn out bad, it's not going to be because of the Pokedex Thanos snap. That's really my only opinion about this whole debate. He's not wrong, you know. Yeah. Oh no no! They're not. I think I, I don't think it's more that I don't think Sword and Shield will be bad because of it. I think Sword and Shield will be the game that they were regardless. Um, I think that it's just a bad direction for the Pokemon games in general to be taking because of like I said during the topic. Like I, I'm very worried about it losing the magic for the kids, and yeah. uh, I mean it's lost the magic to an extent with me. I mean I'm mm-hmm. getting I, the more and more like time goes on, I'm I'm like adjusting and I'm adapting to it. I, yeah, I don't, but it's because you have to. It's because I have to, yeah. And I, I like I'm I'm getting okay with it. Like I'm okay with it. I, I again like I, I don't know how I feel about it in general. Um if I weren't a host of a Pokemon podcast, but Yeah. I mean I mean he has a good point because like this is what I've been saying from the beginning. Like the first six months, there's absolutely no oh, yeah, exactly. to your yeah. experience except for the fact that it's like you're enjoying a very good meal and you know you can't have dessert Mm -hmm. after it no matter what yeah i think i think it ruins the post game but i mean if they put enough pokemon in it i don't know that i'll worry too much Uh, we'll see yeah we end up with 600 or so anyway he concludes thank you for listening to me and keep creating awesome content well thank you and we will i didn't know we created awesome content so that's a pleasant surprise um <laughs> that's that's the reason i'm here you created awesome content and it drew me in like, like <laughs> i don't know a moth to a flame uh i think it's also because we're a bit more genuine than other other people typically that's part of the awesome i think that's part of, i think that's part of what we do i think we try to be a bit more we, this also isn't like a job for anybody here which i think is probably the biggest factor honestly yeah honestly yes i think that's probably the biggest factor because none of us feel like we have to keep doing it because our spot to keep sponsors happy or to do anything like that um, just to keep patrons happy. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this next one is from, uh, Bodhi. All right. Hello, Thatch and the gang. I don't really know what to think about Gigantamaxing. I feel like it's another gimmick to show off Game Freak's favorite Pokemon. Mm, not wrong. <laughs> I was kind of glad about getting rid of Mega Evolution, so I'm not forced into using a Pokemon that Mega Evolves when creating a team. But now... I'm back to having to choose from a small handful of Pokemon to make the best team possible. P.S. I'm going to cry when Hone Edge isn't in the game. It's Sword and Shield Pokemon, and I don't think it will make it. Man, you and me both. Uh, yeah. Age of Slash is so meta-warping, I'm not expecting it to be there. Uh, that's true, that's true. If, like, if the balance argument's real and Age of Slash has shown up... I yep. I don't know how I feel about that either. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I agree. That is probably just the best Pokemon from Gens. Well, I don't know. It's between that and Greninja. Gre- Greninja wasn't as good until Ash Greninja happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough call between which of those two is the best Gen 6 Pokemon, but yeah. it's one of them. Ash Greninja was the real problem, I think. I, I really think. I, think. I mean, it's really telling when you ban Protein Greninja in Gen 6, but then you let it stick around, plus it's beefier brother in Gen 7. They've been really lax on trying to ban things in this yeah, format. Yeah, in this this format. They were all ban happy on Gen 6. They probably could have cooled down a little bit. But yeah. this gen, they're just like, yeah, it can exist. It's not a problem. Yeah. Is it Feromoso or Meta- Mega Metagross? No. Nope. Arena Trap. Arena Trap. We're aggressively. To be fair, to be fair, Mega Metagross was in there for a way longer than it should have been. Oh, yeah. I think lasted a good half year. At least. Yeah, it lasted a long time. Though to be fair, Naganadel lasted a week, and that was probably longer than it should have. It was gone. It was gone <laughs> right away. That thing was gone. That, yeah. that thing. That thing came in. It was. They were just like, nope, 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 nope. Just like Zygarde <laughs> complete and Marshadow. It's like, no, we can't let this happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was a horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> it's like, hi, Marshadow. Bye, Marshadow. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, that is uh, that is it for the mailbag this week. 
If you want to yeah. email us next week at pucklepodcast at gmail.com, letting us know how you play Pokemon, like, let us know. Would you be interested in playing just whatever Sword and Shield meta is on Showdown? Or would you play the Legacy format? Let us know. Pucklepodcast at gmail.com. How do you feel about that? Uh, I- I'm actually really interested in that. Maybe we get some preliminary data. Though, granted, our, our community is probably biased. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I- I'm really interested to see what you guys think about that. If you want to help support the show, you can go over to our social media over at Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, at Puckle Podcast, and all of those. We really appreciate it if you guys go over there. It's free to just follow us, and it's a great way to find out where we're going to be, especially Thatch at MitsuriCon in a couple of weeks. Be there, or be square, or I guess, like, just not be at an anime convention. Um, I'll be there, though, and I'll be giving a panel on, uh, uh, what is it? What did I say? Gosh, uh, I already forgot. The Coronet Effect, the Magnetic Evolution of Pokemon where we're going to talk about some electricity and magnetism in uh, Pokemon. I'm actually super excited. I'm really, really excited because like I get to talk physics at the same time I get to talk Pokemon. It's just going to be fantastic all around. And if you're into science and Pokemon, it's a great thing for you too. Um, it may make its way to the podcast. I don't want to make promises though. <laughs> I don't want to make promises because there, there could be technical difficulties when we get there and I'm not able to record it and stuff like that. So I really don't want to make the promise that I can record a panel and then give it to you. And so other than that, um, let's see. If you want to, uh, if you if you do want to do more Puckly goodness uh, with us, though, join our Discord server. We have a good time. We love talking to you guys. Um, you can also go listen to our giant back catalog if you're new to the show. Also, talking about Discord, we will have a battle clinic coming up this week. So Friday, boom, do it. Pu. Hey, P-U this format. is for speaking of the Discord. Can we give the Green Taurus badge to YJV1021? Oh yeah, I, I've yeah yeah that's fine. Yes, that's that is absolutely. I think so. Get your green Taurus badge, YJV121. And then, of course, let's see. Uh, what else do I usually say? Um, <laughs> check out the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Puckle Podcast. We've been putting the uh, the the uh, Twitch streams that I've been doing for the Pokemon Black Nose lock up there. Uh, one of them just went up today, actually. So go check those out. It's really cool. It's really fun. You guys can follow along. I think I'm going to try to do something a bit more structured for the next Nuzlocke. I, there's going to be a next Nuzlocke as well. I just said that. I mean, hey. there's a sequel to the game you're playing, so... There is a sequel to the game I'm playing, and honestly, I have far better memories of Black and White 2 than I do of uh, whatever game I'm playing now, Black and White. So I feel like we have to do it, and I kind of really want to do like the, the memory link, and I want to do challenge mode. Ooh. As I think I have all the keys already, so I think we can just get challenge mode. Ooh, that'll be fun. Though I um, think the uh, easy mode's actually harder, just because you don't gain experience as quickly. Oh, that's because true. Because it's Gen 5 XP. But I don't know. We're going to try. Uh, but I mean, a show made entirely of grinding is not a good show. True. Yeah. So I feel like we do that. We have a good time. Uh, also, we've lost a lot of things due to grinding. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> grinding is where the Pokemon die. <laughs> rip Victini. Rip yeah. Victini. It's fine. And so that is, uh, I mean, it was. A, it's a good time. So come over there. Speaking of that, if you want to catch those streams live, go over to twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast and drop us a follow. It's also a great place to support the show by giving us a Twitch Prime subscription or a regular Twitch subscription. If you want to do that, maybe get some merch instead. You can go over to the Puckle Tea Public Store. We have a bunch of shirt designs over there. I still haven't gone through and tried to find like Gen 8 shirts for us to put up on the store. I do need to do that. I'm sure there's all Gumi shirts. Oh, sure. Uh, there's going to be Gumi or not Gumi. I don't know why I just said Gumi. Um, there's going to be like Grookey shirts and Sobble shirts and stuff like that. I'll get some of that up there. And then finally, if you want to support the show in a more direct manner and you want to get some cool Summer League badges, you can go ahead and go over to patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast. And it's a great place. We do a lot of cool stuff. You get shiny Pokemon badges, a whole shebang. And I need to start getting on a better schedule for live shows. I, it, summer's just very hectic most of the time. Like in June, I had zero weekends where it was free for me to do stuff. It was awful. So thankfully, my time's starting to starting to spread out once August gets here. So we'll we'll get back to those live shows. So if you're a patron and you want to be on one of those, it's a great place to do it. Uh, other than that, though, I think that's it. I am Trainer Thatch. I am the Fluffy Swimsicle. I'm our Sigma. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time.
And as always, we here at Puckle would like to thank our patrons who help make the show possible. So thank you to Greg, Viger, Corey, Duly Noted, Ten Little Men, Wing Zero, 87, Rob, Josh, Keegan, Ilaria, Sean, Michael, Paul, Dexio, Christian, Miguel, Apollo, Rotted Mushroom, Mr. Panda, Titan Killer, Lane, Lord Corbinick, Brian, Seth Vilo, Wade, Marcus, Kinkovic, and Harmonia, Alolan Dergs, Tank, uh, Samuel, Claude Nine, Bodtech, Chris, Swampertata, Tori, Steve, Josh, Doc McStuffles, Cody, the Golden Klefki, the British Gent, Trevor, Mark, TJ Van Troll, Doc Knox, Dennis, Echo, Jonathan, Disco Calypso. That's so much fun to say. Taylor, Charles, Colt, Maxi, Shambles, Justin, Tim, Andrew, Old Man Tub, David Kennedy, Dark Shaggy 06, Chris, Jeremy, Louise, Franco, Justin, Locke, Jordan, Zach, Jonathan, Graham, Greg, Alec, Mikey, Kevin, Josh, Dark Flame, Half Full Reviews, Sparky, Coop, Jordan, Nick, Dylan, Huitku, Shira, Smacky the Frog, Ironcaster, Kevin, Orange Avenger, Dylan, Thomas, Curtis, Anime Gravy, Hazelnut, Askers, Joshua, Joseph, um, Travi, Cordell, Julie, and, and the real EV. Thank you to every one of you uh, that make help the show possible. Uh, we can just do awesome things with that. And I hope you uh, look forward to your rewards in the mail coming out. They should be sent out uh, as soon as this episode sent out or probably Tuesday. I'm, I'm finishing up the packaging. They'll be out on Tuesday. So we will catch you guys on the flip flop.